This is all the body parts of the car. So we've got the sills, the lights, the two wings, which I might put on my wall. I'm not too sure what to do with these. I feel like it's a bit of a waste to scrap them. Wheels over here, back bumper, front bumper, grill, and underbelly. The plan with the rust is we're going to hit it with the sandpaper first to see how much force it takes to bring the rust off. If we need a little bit more, we'll probably switch over to these drill bits, which are steel fibers, I believe, um, and they should get the rust off nice and easily. And then we've got the block for the sandpaper. Not sure how much I'm going to use that though because it is quite large. a bad job of it as you can see I'm starting to get through to the the metal it's made it nice and smooth um, but I have just used one whole pad and it's not even finished yet so I think I'm going to step it up to the drill bits for now and then use it to finish off as you can see on the outside all the bubbling right around there so I'm gonna have to bring it out I reckon all the way to this edge and hopefully that edge there will give me a decent paint finish because of the light reflecting it won't matter if it's an exact colour match or not. So I'm sure, as you've seen, it's quite hard to control. And it doesn't matter because I've gone out just over the rust. But I need to be careful that I don't go too far into the other paint. With the scraping. I found the 80 grit sanding disc that I was using on the grinder to be the most useful tool. It really got into the rust a little bit more than the wire wheels did. But you have to be really careful that you don't go too deep and start gouging out the rust because you might end up going through the panel or you just create more work for yourself with the filling. That is as much of the rust removed as possible without cutting the metal out. 
it is time to prep the arch for filler. Firstly, I'll feather the edges of the existing paint to provide a smooth transition for the new paint, being careful not to sand the good paint. Originally, I wanted to do this project with as little outside help as possible. However, I realized the number of errors that I would make and have to correct would result in the car being undrivable when I needed it. So, a bodywork expert, let's call him C, has graciously offered to coach me and inspect my work when I've finished at each stage. One of the most important things I learned while hand sanding on a car is that you need firmness, fluidity and control. As you can see, my fingers are guiding the sanding motion using the inside of the arch. I'm using sweeping motions for this. And remember, the aim of all of this is to get the transition between the metal and the paint to be as smooth as possible. So you will often see me feeling where I have just sanded for any slight ridges as you can't see them now, but you will when the light reflects from the new paint that we apply. As with metal rusts, it expands and can warp. It is therefore important to make sure there are no high points by tapping it with a hammer. Now it's time for the main event, the filler. This is my first time using filler and C told me to take it all off and start again. As you can see, I'm kind of applying it in dribs and drabs and then smoothing it over in kind of small sections, which is not what you want to do. Whereas this time I'm applying one filler spreader's width at a time, trying not to let it leak out the back when I drag it. And then I do one final smoothing scraper over the whole lot, which sadly I did not catch because my camera turned off. The way we're working this is that C does the right hand side of the car and I'll do the left hand side of the car. So you can demonstrate on one side for me then to practice on the other side on my own. And now I'm sanding it down with 180 grit sandpaper. When mixing filler with hardener, the general rule of thumb is a golf ball size of filler to a pea size of hardener. I was doing this in very warm conditions, uh, it was a bit of a heat wave this summer, so the filler mixture went off really quickly. So I generally only had about two turns to put it on the car before it would just go off and I have to make a new batch.
Villa has now been completely sanded and is totally smooth to the touch. So now is the time to mask it off, ready for priming. As you can see now, I'm using a technique called Frenching, which is where you fold over the sticky end to sticky end on one side of the tape, so you'll get an edge which won't stick to the car. This is important so the primer can blend into the original paint a little bit better and you won't get a hard line. It'll kind of blow in. I'm masking it off in a way which enables the priming use to stay as local to the area of repair as possible. So that's both sides of the car masked up, ready to be primed tomorrow. We will be using this 50 litre compressor, I think it was about 200 pounds, um, with a different spray gun than the one was included, but we'll see what the quality is like. So we have got some hardener to go in the primer, and the Acri filler, so this is filler primer. And that basically means that any minor imperfections in the bodywork with the filler that we've done, this paint will account for, meaning that we should get a smoother finish and it's just filling in all those little tiny little pits that have been left from when we've done the sanding down here. Thank you so much for watching, if you enjoyed this episode hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode where we finish these rear quarter panels off.